I would like to welcome you all in the lecture series of electrical engineering. In this session, I'm going to discuss most important question which can be expected from module number one. So you can, as you can observe, the module number one comprises of three segments. First one is introduction. Later, you'll be talking about uh, power generation, uh, then DC circuits. So these are the three segments of module one syllabus. You can just go through that. Based upon the syllabus, I have, I have prepared a few important questions uh, for your uh, information. So first of all, let me go through the individual questions. I think uh, the screen is visible to everybody. Uh, as you can observe, let's move on to the first question. Uh, give a classification of sources of energy. Explain in brief. So how will you answer this? So you can explain like uh, conventional sources and non-conventional sources. Again, you can divide conventional sources into commercial and non-commercial sources. Give the examples also. Okay. So this you are supposed to elaborate in details. Fine. So try to elaborate individually, prepare the flowchart and try to elaborate. I have displayed the answer. Kindly go through that, pause the video. All right. Yeah. Let's move on to the another question. So another question you can observe. So wh what are conventional and non-conventional sources of energy? Same thing we repeat, re explain right now. Another one is differentiate conventional and non-conventional sources. Okay. One is replenishable. Other one is non-replenishable. Okay. So you have to elaborate with the examples also, conventional sources, uh, all domains of fossil, all derivatives of fossil fuel. The non-conventional sources, you can solar, wind, biomass, etc. all are called non-conventional sources of energy. You can give the example and you can make a table and compare each other. Explain the single line diagram of electrical power system network. Power transmission is a large, mo a large movement of electricity at a high voltage level from power plant to substation. So total uh, power system will be divided into three segments. Power generation, uh, we can observe. So power uh, transmission at the middle, later power distribution. You can explain with the help of this block diagram. Generating voltage will be usually 11 kV. Later, you can go for high voltage power transmission to reduce the losses. Uh, at the end, you can uh, talk about uh, power distribution. There are two types of distribution, primary distribution and uh, secondary distribution. If I talk about power transmission, we, we can observe primary transmission and the secondary transmission. I request you to go through this diagram and uh, explain accordingly. All right. Next is actually explain the schematic diagram of hydroelectric power plant. You need to explain how electricity is generated from uh, the potential energy. We are storing uh, the water with the help of a dam. Okay. Uh, later, how you are going to generate? You need to explain what is reservoir, how what is the duty of dam, uh, how the uh, surge tank will be reduce the pressure, and uh, what about the valve house? Importance of valve house. Then you can talk about the penstock. How the water is flowing from high head to low head with the help of a penstock. Then you can talk about powerhouse. Powerhouse comprises of all the electrical setup like a turbine, uh, turbine generator set. Uh, then the auxiliary equipments, etc., and the tail race and the river. These are the things you need to explain in brief. Each component you can explain, like a penstock, powerhouse, surge tank, a brief working also. You can explain the flow diagram for easiness of explanation. All right. Now you can see another question, question number six. Explain with the block diagram uh, of nuclear power plant. This is also very easy. You have to talk about nuclear fission and the chain reaction. Okay. Later, you can explain about the block diagram. So, schematic diagram of uh, nuclear power plant. In that, you ought to explain uh, what is the duty of fuel roads. Okay. It is made up of it, uranium, thorium, neptunium, neptunium plutonium, etc. And uh, we have control road and moder moderator to regulate the uh, reaction. We have the coolant. Later, there is a heat exchanger, steam generation, which is connected to the steam turbine. Steam turbine is coupled with the alternator. You ought to explain the block diagram. Clear. Another question is explain with the neat block diagram of wind power plant or wind power generator. Here you need to talk about uh, the kinetic energy. Okay, kinetic energy will be converted into mechanical energy. Then mechanical energy is going to convert into electrical energy. Main component is wind turbine. Okay, so the main function of wind turbine is to produce mechanical energy. Wind flow will be converted into mechanical energy using the wind turbine. Wind turbine is coupled with the permanent magnet synchronous generator. There is a power conditioning devices. Output of power conditioning devices will be connected to transformer for stepping up the voltage because uh, usually the output voltage is very less. Uh, usually the PMST output will be AC only. So we have we require an AC to AC converter. So you can explain with the help of uh, this block diagram. So output can be connected to grid or you can use it for independent load. 
this is regarding uh, the operation of wind turbine power plant okay i hope it is very clear you can mention advantage and disadvantage as well now i would like to explain about another question explain question number 8 explain with the help of block diagram solar power plant and generation in solar power plant solar energy will be converted into useful energy either electricity or heat there are two type of uh, solar system one is solar photovoltaic other one is solar thermal in solar photovoltaic solar energy is converted into electricity by using this particular segment pv panel then there is a power electronic converter then battery for storing electricity then load okay you can explain how how it work now you can i have written the explanation panel then you have to explain about converter uh, then battery okay so basics you have to explain other one is solar thermal system that means solar energy will be converted into useful heat by using solar collectors and concentrators okay this is called a solar thermal system another important question is a state and explain ohm's law uh, mention the limitations it is very easy okay usually these kind of questions are repeated several times ohm's law you have to explain the condition at a constant pressure and temperature uh, the potential difference across the two conductors is directly proportional to current flowing through the conductor okay so this is regarding the ohm's law uh, so according to ohm's law we can write v is equal to a constant into i i into r okay this equation is very important okay and uh, what are the drawbacks uh, limitations uh, uh, we have to follow the certain conditions such as temperature and condition tem constant temperature and constant pressure second one is it is not applicable for insulators it's not applicable for the semiconductors okay so we cannot apply for uh, alternating uh, system uh, directly because there are certain assumption okay it's applicable only for dc circuits like that you can explain another question you can observe x state and explain kirchhoff's law if you want you can mention who has uh, implemented kirchhoff's law uh, there are two statements one is Kirchhoff's current law, other one is called Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law that you can explain separately KVL and KCL. So KCL you can explain uh, summation of I is equal to zero and write the related statement. Uh, write one example also, okay, total current uh, meeting at a node or junction that is equal to zero. Then KVL uh, you can ap uh, apply, consider a closed loop, then summation of EMF and the voltage drop in the closed loop that is equal to zero. You can elaborate with the help of some examples also sign convention if uh, if you get enough time you can mention about sign convention with the suitable examples okay yes so next is very important problem uh, that uh, problems related to kirchhoff's law you can uh, elaborate it fine so like this you can get uh, several types several problems you have to calculate the uh, potential difference between the point x and y first of all identify where is x and y here you can observe x is available here yes so please note down this. Apply the KV, KVL. So use the using the KVL, you can easily calculate it. I'll show you one example. Okay, if you want, I will show you. Yeah, there are different examples. Kindly go through that. Okay. So I have prepared so many videos regarding this. Uh, if you want, you can watch. Uh, so like this also, you'll be getting so many problems. Okay, the two loops. Okay, two loops and the two uh, independent equations you have to solve by using Cramer's rule or you can directly solve by using calculator to save the time. Okay, so these kind of problems can be repeated. Okay, please make a note of this. So I think this, this, uh, this type of uh, problem also there are chances. Uh, kindly go through. Okay, please confirm it. Yes, you can. You may expect uh, this kind of bridge-like bridge, bridge -like form. Okay, so there are several problems. Ultimately, you need to apply KVL, KCL. You can stop the video and then note down how what is the answer. Yeah. So whatever the question you have seen now, that is one of the repeated question. See in the uh, in the year of uh, 2017 and 2018. So here you can apply uh, the voltage uh, voltage potential difference between X and Y. Here we have to create the loop first. So two loops. There are two loops available. Apply the KVL. Correct. So we are applying the KVL, identifying the current I1 and I2 respectively. Thereafter, we will be defining what is Vx by Vx minus Vy. Okay. So ultimately, we will be getting minus 3.7 volts. This is the way how to calculate it. Kindly go through, go through it once because I have worked on this. So based upon that, I have got the answers. Kindly verify once. 
Question number 12, show that the equivalent resistance of two resistors connected in parallel is the ratio of product of those two resistors divided by the sum of uh, two resistances. That you can, so, uh, just like an indirect question in the form of uh, proving of uh, the parallel combination. So we need to mention about the two resistors and you have to prove in the form of parallel combination. So other one is actually two uh, parallel resistors having the resistance 20 ohm and 40 ohm respectively connected in series with the 10 ohm resistor. If, uh, if the current through 10 ohm resistor is 5 ampere, you have to calculate by using the following parameters. Here you need to apply uh, the current division rule, voltage division rule, and you need to know the ohm's law, basics of ohm's law, how to calculate the power. Power is P is equal to I square R, okay, or V square by R. You can define with the help of ohm's law. If you want, I will show one example. I think you can follow up the similar problem. Yes. First of all, you have to draw the circuit diagram like this. Two resistors are in parallel and the third resistor is connected series with the parallel combination. Okay. Now you have to apply uh, the R equivalent you have to calculate. Later you have to apply the Ohm's law. I is equal to V by R equivalent. Later we will be getting the total voltage. See, total voltage I will be getting. Afterwards, you need to apply the current division formula. Look at this. Apply the current division formula. Compute I1 and I2 separately. Later you can calculate the total power P is equal to V into I. Then power corresponding to individual resistor, that is P20 and P30. Okay, P20, I square R. You can use the formula I square R. P30 also you can calculate, I square R. Okay, uh, similarly, you will be getting third resistor, I square R. So power consumed by each resistor, dissipated by each component of resistor can be computed. Okay, because resistor that is going to consume uh, the energy. Question number 14 is also basically uh, the computation of like uh, uh, applying the, uh, you can uh, draw the circuit instead of same circuit you can draw and you can easily compute. Then question number 15, so that is also you can apply uh, suitable KVL, KVL you can apply. Okay, so basics of Ohm's law KVL you can solve by question, question number 15. Question number 16, so same problem we have already shown. Okay, same, same problem you can uh, solve by using uh, KVL, KVL, KCL. You can apply KVL and KCL. I have already shown you. Okay. Another one is actually uh, current flow, current of 20 amp flow through two ammeter A1 and A2. Ammeter means you have to mention the resistor R1 and R2. The potential difference across A is 0.2 volt, across B is 0.3 volt. Uh, and uh, if the same current will be divided between A and B. Okay, you can apply it based on whatever you studied, KVL, KCL, potential voltage division rule, current division rule. You can make the circuit diagram, draw the circuit diagram and solve this. So for this, you can refer these two uh, textbooks. These are most uh, uh, useful for you. Try to work out similar kind of problem. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any queries. Okay, kindly go through and practice it. Happy learning. Best of luck for your examination.